As you all know, every Wednesday, I highlight the stories of those who have been wrongfully convicted and they are now exonerated. I'm looking forward to our next guest. He is from North Philadelphia. He spent 11 years behind bars for a crime he did not commit. Dante Patterson, how are you, sir? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for being here. I appreciate this. I really, really do. Uh, so I always start here. Uh, you were 17 years old at the time in 2007, correct? Yes. 17 years old. So tell me the young man that you were before all of this happened to you. Um, when I was 17. You know, I was just a regular kid, you know, running around, having fun. But at the time that I got locked up, I was, you know, ready to start working and everything. And then this whole situation came up. Yeah, exactly. And so it, it happens uh, in, in, is it August of 2000? No, I'm sorry, January of, of 2007. Uh, a friend of yours is shot. Uh, you're not at the scene. You hear about the shooting and you're so in shock that you, you go to the scene and you're not wearing shoes. You just have on sock, socks on because you're so disturbed by, by what's happening. So tell me about that day and how you got to the scene. Um, the day that happened, um, I, um, I found out, I heard, I heard about it and I'm like, Oh, he got shot. You know, I'm in shock. It's my friend. So I go out the house, just, just out the house with nothing on my feet, just socks. And I get to the corner, I see my friend and I realize that it's him. So I go over to try to see if I can help him in everything. But, but when I get there, I see that he, you know, he's bleeding, he's unconscious and everything. So there's nothing that I can do. So I kept, you know, I told people to call the ambulance and all of that. And that's when the ambulance and everything came And Next thing you know, the cops come and they grab me. On the scene, they grab you. Yes. Wow. And was it, do you, they felt like you, uh, you were a suspect because you didn't have shoes on. Is that, is that the only reason why they, why they, uh, why they arrested you? No, um, um, somebody told them that they seen me from a block away. Right, exactly. And then also, uh, there were people uh, at the store who, and I guess they were Haitian and they couldn't speak a lot of English, and they were pressured by police. To, this is later on, of course, but pressured by police to say that you were a part of this crime as well, too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're when you're arrested for this, you know, again, this is someone, you know, who's gotten shot and they they put you into custody. What are you what are you thinking? How are you feeling? I was scared. I was I was 17 at the time. I was scared. And the only thing that was going through my mind was I ain't do it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so how long does it take before you are you you have to go to a trial? Um. Like like a year, a year. Now, are you behind bars the entire time, waiting for trial? Yes, you're behind bars the entire time, waiting for trial. And tell me a bit about this process, as far as your quote unquote public defender, uh, just gearing up to this trial. Like, how are they preparing you? How how are you getting ready for this? Um, they used to come see me. They used to come see me when I was um when I was in the county, pull me out. Let me know what's what's going on and everything, and um, let me know that um that they got this, they got that. This person saying this, this person saying that, like just regular stuff. Right. And so, are you feeling like? Are you thinking this isn't this isn't going to end well? I mean, what well, what are you thinking as you're waiting for trial? Do you feel like they're on your side, or do you feel like it's not going to happen? It's not going to end well. Um, when I was. When I was in there making calls to them, that's when I start to feel like, yeah, this not this this not going in well. It's not. And why? What was happening to to make you uh see that they're not really they 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 they, they don't want to see you uh free? To me, it seemed like that 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 they wasn't on a job because it's like when you call your attorney, you know they work for you, so. 
it's like when you call your attorney, you expect them, you know, to pick the phone up. You know, if you find out stuff, you let them know. And you hoping that they send the investigators out to do what they got to do, but none of that was going on. And so you gear up for the trial, you're, you're at the trial. And like I was saying, there was a, there was folks there, uh, folks at the grocery store who felt like they were being forced by police to say that you were uh, the, the, the killer in this, in this horrible crime. And as you're in trial, what are you, what are you thinking as you're hearing uh, this quote unquote evidence? Um, when I went to trial, I was, I was, you know, I was, on the type time, like, like they going to tell the truth that they know that I ain't do it. But when I went to trial, one of them told the truth and the other one, he just, you know, he lied, but then he said, at the end, he's saying that he was pressured to say that I did it and all of that, but it helped, it so, helped so, out. So hold up. So the other one, he's lying towards the end of the testimony on 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 the trial like on like testifying he says that he was pressured uh-huh. he admits it right there wow he admits wow, that, um, that they pressured them they said that they're gonna lock him up and take him away from his family well that's i mean that's good that he admitted that but what was the reaction from from the judge or the courtroom or the jury where he's literally saying these these cops made me lie the judge was shocked Wow. She was shot. I had her own female judge. She was shot. Well, then, I mean, just for our audience who may not understand how this kind of stuff works, then how in the world are you convicted of first degree murder, life without parole? I mean, how, how in the world did they still manage to convict you? I mean, I know how, how, how much, the, you know, this system is just broken, but nonetheless, yeah. like you have somebody admitting, how are they able to do this to you? It's like, it's like with the courts, they go off of, they go off of um the first, the first statements that they give them. So like if they, if they write down on a statement that you um, you did it or whatever, they seen you do this and you did um, they seen you do that. It's like that's what they go off or what they wrote down on the statement first. Even when they can be lying, they still gonna go with it. And weren't there other folks at the scene who said they saw the killer and he was dressed in all black and he had like marks on his face? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So they actually saw someone that did not match your your uh, description at all. Yes, that was wow. the um, that was the store owner. That was the store owner. So they saw someone and they they basically uh, targeted you. So when they tell you that when you hear that that you're guilty uh, and you're in that courtroom. What what goes through your mind? Um, I got found guilty at my second trial. The first trial, right. I won this in two thousand and eight, when the right. guy um when the guy said that they made him, they made him um say that I did it and all of that. I got a hung jury. Right. And, and when, when when you have a hung jury, are you, are are you released or you're still behind bars? Um, a hung jury, you basically you basically. Like you basically not guilty, but they still get a chance to retrial you. And that's what they did in my situation. So you, you remained behind bars for the uh, second trial? Yes, I remained you... behind bars Man. until my second trial. That's insane. If you got a hung jury, like, that's crazy. So the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, second trial, did they have those that same person testify who said that I was forced to do this? Or he wasn't there for the second trial? Um, yes, the second trial. Yes, they switched my own. They switched my judge. They switched my jury, and I had the same witnesses. But they came to the next trial and said I did it. And do you like? I've covered so many cases like this, Dante, and we keep hearing this. So many folks are saying that that these people are testifying against me, although we know they are affected by the system, they're being forced to do it. Are you angry? Like, how does it make you feel that these people are testifying against you, knowing that your life and your freedom is on the line? Yes, I was, I was, I was very angry because at the end of the day, this is my life y'all playing with. This isn't like, 
this is my life. So whether you tell the truth or if you don't tell the truth and I get convicted, I'm going to lose my life and be away from my family and my child. And that's what so, happened. So that when, when they come back for the second trial, that was, that was what really did it is them, you know, those two coming back and saying, yes, he did it. N nobody forced me to say this. That's what really led to your conviction. Yes. And them hiding evidence that could have proved my whole innocence the whole entire time. Yeah. What evidence did they not present to the, uh, to the court? Um, it was, it was documents that, that other people test, um, the other people gave statements, letting them know that I ain't do it. It wasn't me. So 11 years behind bars for a crime you didn't commit. Uh, how is your soul? How is your spirit just getting through that just day by day? Cause you're a young guy. I mean, you're, you're a teenager. That I, you know, it was, it was times that I, that, that I was giving up, but I just couldn't give up because I knew that I really was innocent and I really didn't do this crime. And I knew that I had a chance to prove my innocence. And all I had to do was just, you know, work and find out people that can help me. And that's what I did. Were you, I mean, being so young behind bars, were you afraid for your safety, just the, the uh, day by day of being incarcerated? At first I was, but then, then I got like, I got used to being in jail, something that I didn't want to do, but you being in that predicament, you're going to have to get used to it. Right. There's no other option. There's no other option. So with your case, everything changes with uh, district attorney, Larry Krasner, correct? Uh, yes. You, you um, have a team working for you. Go ahead. Yes. It um, changed with um, the, the new district attorney, Larry Krasner and um the Pennsylvania Innocent Project and um, my lawyer, um, Hayes Hunt. And they were able to, so how were they able to prove that you were wrongfully behind bars? Um, they, um, they investigated, like my case, they did a full, how do you pronounce this? A full on um, thorough investigation on my case. And that's when they just start finding out everything. Something that and I never had when I had my first lawyer, they did it. Right, that, that you should have had, that you yes. should have had. That's crazy that you didn't have it. And you're finally released May of 2018 after 11 years behind bars. How was your family affected by this? I mean, I know you said you, had a, you, have, you have a daughter, but how was your family affected just you being behind bars for 11 years? They was going through it. It's a lot, man. They was going through. I lost family members. It's a lot. That place, man, no. that place is hell. That's a place yeah. I recommend nobody to go, but that's where they send people. It's hell. Yeah. And I can imagine, I, I hear this too, that it's not just the inmates, it's the guards as well. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not just the inmates, it's the guards as well disrespectful because you know they got the upper hand so you know they they use it and it's been uh almost three years but how are you how are you uh you know a lot of people say it's ptsd it's trauma like how are you recovering from just being behind bars like you said in, in hell for 11 years like how are you just getting through that just being out now i take it day by day you no, know, it's still it's it's still a little hard, but you know, I just take it day by day, step by step. Just yeah, do what sorry. I gotta do. Uh if anybody else out there is is going through this right now that they're wrongfully behind bars or they have somebody in their family who's behind bars. Uh, and I've talked to folks who are behind bars for 44 years. I mean, it's just it's heartbreaking. What advice do you have for them just to get through this? I say, keep fighting, don't give up. Keep fighting, don't give up. Do what I did, man. It's a lot of it's a lot of um, it's a lot of um colleges out there that have projects, innocent projects that's willing to help. 
if you really in this shit. And I say, man, reach out to him. Reach out to him. There's one thing I know about them, the innocent, the Temple Innocent Project. If you're really innocent, they fight for you. Yeah, Temple more University than what, in Philly. Yeah, they do more than what your lawyers do. Uh, do you, if folks want to want to help out and support you in any capacity, do you have a cash app that they could uh, help out and support? Um, Marshall Street Tay. On cash Marshall, app. Marshall, uh, dollar sign Marshall, M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L, S-T-T-A-E, correct? Yes. Great, great. Well, thank you, sir. Anything else you want to leave us with? Um... I got a clothing line that I started. It's called Money Motivated. Nice. I got um puppies that I'll be selling, bullies. <laughs> 1700 bullies. And um trying to get this car wash. This car wash um this car wash started in um this mountain service. Mountain service. What's that? What's a mountain um, service? TV mounts, like if you need your own TVs on oh. the wall. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's good, man. That you're trying to like, you know, uh, be your own kind of entrepreneur. That's where that's where we are right now. These yeah. days of being at a job for 20, 30 years, those days are over. You got to yep. be your own kind of creator. So, I hear that. How can folks follow you on social media? Um, they can follow me on Instagram at Marshall Street Tech. Okay, same thing as your Cash App. All right. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful.